Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. This was a special request video today from some of my viewers who have been interested in how ground drones are being utilized. And this one, I personally think, is one of the most productive and effective drones that are on the battlefield today. And it's certainly something I think we're going to see a lot more of. This is the Uran-6, a remote-controlled robotic minesweeper designed to save lives and create routes for troops to follow behind on the battlefield. Now, as you all know, buried landmines and explosive traps aren't anything new. They're a bit of a deadly legacy, but modern conflicts are still seeing them heavily, of course, in Ukraine, and clearing them is often a slow and perilous job. That's where the Uran-6 is coming in. Now, this is a six-ton tracked robot, and it takes a very dangerous role in punching through into minefields with a remote-controlled operator as far back as they could possibly get, because this thing is literally flinging mines out of the way. The Uran-6 has its beginnings as a partner development program based on a Croatian design. In fact, the Russian robot is essentially a replica of the famous DOK-ING MV4 mine clearance system from Croatia. Russian JSC-766 UPTK manufactured the Uran-6 as a domestic version of the MV4, bringing the design into Russian service by the mid-2010s. Early units were deployed with the Russian army engineers around 2014, where they proved their worth in the Chechen Republic by clearing leftover mines from past conflicts. By 2015, the military began fielding the robots to engineering units in the southern military district, aiming to boost demining mission efficiency up to 15% in regions like Chechnya. This close cooperation between Russian developers and Croatian developers really jump-started the Uran's development, allowing it to quickly enter service. The result is a very battle-ready robot that can do the work of around 20 human sappers, operating from a safe standoff distance so the soldiers stay out of danger. Despite being purposed for a heavy role, the Uran-6 is relatively compact and actually quite light for a military vehicle of this kind, at roughly 5 to 6 tons. It rides on a robust track chassis of about 3 to 4.5 meters long in total, and it's about 2 meters wide and 1.5 meters high, making it small enough to navigate tight areas and even be airlifted by helicopter or transported in a 20-foot standard shipping container or thrown on the back of a truck like you're about to see right now. The Uran-6 is powered by a six-cylinder turbocharged diesel engine, providing around 240 horsepower, giving it a top speed of around 5 km an hour, with a safety mining crawl speed of around 1.2 km an hour. And let's be honest, we don't really need this thing going fast. It's on purposely designed to go slow. Its hull is built fairly tough, but let's be honest, it's not really designed to take on the full brunt of mines. If it's going to get taken out, the chains and the bucket at the front are going to take the majority of the hit. However, it does have 8 to 10 millimeters of steel armor plates around it, including hardened Hardox 400 steel shields on the engine and vital parts, providing protection against mine blast fragments and even small arms fire up to 7.62 millimeter NATO caliber. Thanks to this armor and low slung profile, the Uran-6 can survive blasts up to 59 to 60 kilograms of TNT equivalent with only minimal damage to its core systems, meaning that you can get it back in the field pretty quickly. It's a mobility kill, not a K kill. On board are four blast-proof cameras, giving the remote operator a 360 degree field of view. The entire system is radio controlled by a single operator who wears a ergonomic control console, essentially a giant backpack with a joystick, in open terrain, the operator can control the robot from up to a thousand meters away, staying safely out of the minefield blast area and, of course, drones that are trying to take it out or snipers. The Uran-6 also boasts impressive endurance. It can work for up to 16 hours on straight power supply and the fuel inside of it. Overall, the design of the Uran-6 emphasizes a lot on survivability, but not so much on mobility. It doesn't need to be but it does in terms of mobility and getting ease of transport. This thing can be loaded quickly and taken just about anywhere you need it to go and brought to a hazardous area and operate for a long period of time, clearing those deadly explosives and then getting packed up and shipped somewhere else. The one reason the Uran-6 is called multifunctional is its ability to swap between various attachments and tools to tackle different tasks. Yes, it's not just designed to blow up mines. Up front, it typically wields a rotating flail unit a drum with chains that thrash the ground to detonate mines safely at a distance. But that's just the start. The Uran-6 can be outfitted with a whole suite of plug-and-play attachments. In the field, crews can switch tools in about 20 minutes using a crane, adapting the robot to the mission's needs. 
Key attachments and capabilities include, obviously, the mine flail, standard chain flail for pounding the soil and triggering mines, ideal for areas with vegetation or soft ground. Now, strangely enough, you'd think that this would go a little deeper than, say, about six or eight inches, but it doesn't. It's only kind of skimming the floor, which for certain mines, it's actually not best suited because certain tank mines actually need a hell of a lot of pressure and are buried quite deep, but it will still probably activate majority of mines that it's coming across. It does have a rotary tiller, a milling drum that churns up the soil and roots out buried explosives such as, you know, maybe wires or trip wires, things like that, just to kind of get them out of the way. And the big thing that's actually being pushed on nowadays with this platform is fiber optic cable. Yes, these things are actually going through the train and capturing all that fiber optic cable that thousands of, you know, fiber optic flown drones are being flown across in the train. This thing will actually gather it up and collect it and probably eventually chew it to pieces because the amount of fiber optic cable out on the battlefield, particularly in Ukraine right now. But uh, fiber optic cable is pretty dangerous. I actually, unfortunately, stumbled across because I don't really look for content on Instagram for the Ukrainian conflict, but uh, it comes up on my feed anyway of a infantry soldier transitioning across a field and getting tangled up in fiber optic cable to the point of another drone then killed him. Um, it's pretty sad to see. Uh, but it's the reality of what's happening and these kind of platforms whether whichever side they're on uh, are able to potentially counter against these risks it's not you know barbed wire and trip wires anymore it's literally just fiber optic cables that are getting in the way and tangling troops up like spider web the bulldozer blaze is a 1.8 meter wide dozer blade for pushing debris or earth and can clear obstacles and create safe lanes there's also a special bulldozer blade with a gripper claw in the center which allows the uran 6 to grab and move objects such as a ton of barbed wire Finally, there's the Robotic Arm and Direct Gripper. This is a crane-like arm that can dig up and handle unexploded ordnance or IEDs once detected. This arm can lift items up to 1,000 kilograms and very useful for removing heavy hazards such as log embankments, things like that. It does have some capability for rear attachments for a forklift and a shovel. Of course, forklift operators are the king of the battlefield. But at the back, it can also mount a very small trench digging shovel extended for engineers if they want to kind of dig a very basic trench for troops to use. But it's not really a long purpose uh, trenching tool because it's just not designed for that. Now, using these tools, the Iran 6 clears all types of anti-personnel and some anti-tank mines, but primarily designed or taking out explosives designed for infantry. Now, it has about a 98% reliability according to its specifications against most anti-personnel mines, which clearly is very effective because it's actually flinging the mine away, which is directing majority of the force and the blast away from the vehicle. But it's not always the case. I'm going upon information I have, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of explosives that can be put into one spot, and no matter how much you flick it, it can still take out that, uh, that blade or that bucket pretty easily. Now it can plow through some pretty dense vegetation, rubble, and even cut through barbed wire obstacles with wires up to eight millimeters thick as it moves. Now you have to bear in mind that just like any tank that tries going through a barbed wire entanglement, it will eventually gum up the drum or the spool that's trying to get rid of it uh, because barbed wire is still very effective at stopping armored groups. You think it's only for infantry, it's not. You get barbed wire in your running gear on a tank, yeah, not a good time. I've seen it firsthand what happens to tracks when they get that much barbed wire in there. And this, uh, you know, the system that it's using, even with the claw, will eventually have some fails because it's just so much it's trying to true through. But it still has the ability to do it. At the end of the day, though, it's also a bomb disposal unit. On command from the operator, the robot can neutralize detected explosives, either by triggering them with its attachments or digging them out for disposal. Thanks to its sturdy build, it can absorb most blasts if the mine detonates under, and it can keep on going. In fact, it's rated to withstand explosive up to around 130 pounds of TNT in power directly to the front of the flail. Beyond mines, though, it can do a little bit more too. It can even put out fires. Yes, it has a little hose attachment that could be attached there, just in case there's a fire hazard or something that's in the way. And, you know, it does have humanitarian capabilities too, which I thought was kind of cool. Now, all of these capabilities make the Iran-6 very versatile as a combat engineer asset. It's not just a minesweeper, but kind of a general purpose sapper robot that can take on the tasks of equivalent to an entire team of engineers, which is then obviously multiplying the unit's effectiveness in the field. Now, since its introduction, the Iran-6 has seen service in several conflict zones, particularly in Syria and, of course, Ukraine. Now, it's fair to say that it has undoubtedly saved lives and limbs by taking soldiers' places in the minefield, but it's not a magic solution to all demining problems. There are important limitations and safety considerations in its use. 
First, even though the Iran-6 can be operated from up to a kilometre away in theory, in practice the human controller often needs to stay much closer, usually within a few hundred metres. This is to maintain a reliable line of sight control and video feed. What this means in theory is that the robots really are only generally used only after an area is secured from enemy fire because the operator can't be too far from the machine. And normally, more heavy duty minesweeping has already been done. In Ukraine, for example, Russian units deploy the Iran-6 behind the front lines or in a captured territory where there's no incoming fire to methodically clear routes. The relatively short remote range highlights the limits of tetherless, radio-controlled UGVs in an active combat zone. You can't send it in too deep into dangerous territory without accompanying troops. Another factor is that Uran-6 still doesn't replace human sappers entirely. While it's excellent for an initial sweep, detonating obvious mines and clearing common paths, it might miss well-hidden or irregularly placed explosive hazards or mines that this thing cannot take out. In practice, once the Uran-6 has rolled through, human engineers still have to follow up with metal detectors, sniffer dogs, etc. to double-check the area. Now, Russian sources have openly noted that the Iran-6 is, quote, not fully trusted, unquote, to get everything, which is why sappers walk behind it to verify a cleared zone. Can we just pause for a second and appreciate that the two Iran-6s are being orchestrated with a conductor robot in this footage? It's They're literally doing ballet, which is kind of cool. I'm um, sorry, I got totally distracted there. Uh, mine clearing is very labor-intensive and time-consuming work, though. So even with a robot, completely sanitizing a battlefield can take months or years. And no matter what you do, even with careful checking, unfortunately, some mines still make it through. Despite the limitations, though, its performance is largely seen as a success. It dramatically reduces the risk during the most dangerous phase of clearance by taking the initial blasts. If a mine explodes, it's the robot that takes the hit, of course, not a person. Operators have reported that the Uran-6 can neutralize explosives beyond 60 kilograms of TNT yield and keep going, and its armor is pretty good at absorbing the explosion. This gives commanders a bit of confidence in using the robot for opening up critical roads and sites, but you wouldn't want to put all your eggs into one basket using these things. Additionally, the psychological benefit should be definitely not underestimated. Troops know that if these machines are in their battle group, it's going to be at least leading the way through a minefield instead of the troops themselves. But as warfare evolves, so does the Iran-6. The Russian military has been learning from each deployment and implementing improvements to make this robotic sapper even more capable. In fact, the Iran-6 has undergone two major modernizations so far. The first upgrade came after the Syrian campaign, incorporating lessons from Palmyra and Aleppo. The second and latest upgrade was announced in mid-2023, reflecting experience gains in Ukraine. These modernizations have focused on strengthening the Uran-6's design with armor protection and was enhanced further with communication systems and improved to extend its control range. A better radio link means the operator can theoretically control the robot from longer distances, but as I mentioned before, that confidence has waned a little bit in recent conflicts, particularly in Ukraine. Russia is looking to field a lot more of the Uran-6 units and integrating them into its force structure. The Ministry of Defense ordered an additional Uran-6 robot setup for 12 units in 2019 alone, and it's prepared to form the first dedicated robotic engineering subunit within the military. There's an entire family of Uran robots being developed. The Uran-14, a larger cousin, is built for heavy mine clearing and firefighting tasks. The Uran-9 is a combat UGV armed with weapons, and together these indicate a broader trend towards robotic support on the battlefield. The Uran-6, for future developments, could include further automation, perhaps more autonomous mine detection sensors and integration with drones for reconnaissance. Who knows? The concept, though, has even broader potential beyond Russia's use. Humanitarian demining efforts around the world could benefit from such robots to clear mines left from the past, sparing civilians from demining and injury. Looking ahead, the vehicle is expected to remain a core asset of the engineering for Russian troops and has continued to be refined as Russia is committed to using robotics to tackle the dangerous work of mines in battle. As mine threats persist in current and future conflicts, robots like the Uran-6 will probably play an ever-growing role in making former battlefields safer for soldiers and civilians alike. Now, I want to be very clear here, folks. I'm not siding with any side here. This is an unbiased, neutral discussion about a piece of equipment. I have no preference at the moment of where some of you are probably looking at this video that I'm making saying, yeah, Matt has some agenda or has some, you know, support to the Russian war or whatever else is going on. It's not the case. So please just bear that in mind as we go through these videos. I'm just giving an informed 
I guess, insight to equipment more so than I am actually talking about the nation that's using them. That being said, the Iran-6, I think, really has proven itself, uh, particularly in combat engineering. It's a tough, reliable little robot that takes on one of the most dangerous jobs in war that people don't have to. And anti-personnel mines, actually, I find are a lot more dangerous than some of the heavier-duty tank mines. From its origin as a copy design to its deployment across multiple war zones, it's shown that technology can save lives on the battlefield but cannot be directly relied upon. It's not perfect, it doesn't work alone, but it's a pretty big leap forward, I think, in an age-old battle between armies and landmines. Folks, thanks so much for watching today and looking at this in-depth look at the Uran-6 and the demining robot that I'm sure is going to be deployed in multiple other militaries around the world in their own configurations. If you enjoyed this deep dive or learned something new, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, if you want to support my channel on Patreon or PayPal, I really appreciate that. Just check the description box below. I also have a mailbox there. I have lots more fascinating topics coming from tanks and drones to other robotic systems. Feel free to leave me a comment with your thoughts on what you want to see next. This is actually today, this video produced by someone who wanted me to look at this particular idea. That's why I made it. So if you want me to create content specifically, let me know. Folks, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. All the best. Bye-bye.